Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my April 2019 TBR. Say it with me everybody, it's TBR time! Yay! <laughs> my favorite videos to shoot every month, honestly. I love doing my vlogs, I love doing my weekly reads, I love doing all those. I love doing these, you guys know that. I think I love even more is going through all of my books and deciding what is going to be added to my TBR every month. Of course, that is the best part. Um, a whole new batch of books, a whole new TBR pile. It's fantastic. So if you are new to my channel, I do break my T my TBRs are very structured and I do break them down, um, you know, into different challenges that I am participating in over the course of the month. So um, I'm going to go through the challenges and I'm going to tell you what books I'm reading and I'll explain as I go. So the very first challenge that I've been participating in for three years in a row now is the Triple RC Challenge, and that is the Romance Readers of Reading, it's the Romance Readers Reading Group on Goodreads. I will of course leave a link to it in the description box below. And every month they do a monthly challenge, and in that monthly challenge they give you ten different prompts, and you need to pick a book for each prompt. Now you don't have to do all ten; you can do one or three or five or eight or seven or whatever, however many you want to do. You can do that many, and um, you're still participating in the challenge. But I like to do all ten. And I have not missed doing each all 10 in the entire time I've been doing this challenge. So I'm going to go through and tell you guys the challenge and let you know what book I picked. So the first book, uh, the first challenge, excuse me, is A is for April. Read a book that starts with A or a book whose author's first or last name starts with the letter A. And I went through my TBR and I sorted it by author last name. And I found this one on my TBR. And it is It Started With a Kiss by Mariana Adair. This is the first book in the Sequoia Lake series. So this one should be a lot of fun. I'm not going to get into what a lot of these books are about because I have about 20 books here to talk about. So I will leave um, a link to all the books or a list of all the books in the description box below in case you're curious to go and check out more about them for yourself. The second one, the bird of the month, Canary. So this year they're doing birds of the month, which is a lot of fun. Canaries represent joy, freedom, and intellectual development. Canaries are happy birds that spread joy and a sense of well-being. For some, a flying canary could be a sign of freedom, or in the extreme, it could mean entrapment, a caged canary. Read a book that starts with a letter in canary, C-A-N-A-R-Y, or a book with a happy character, your interpretation, or a book where someone is freed or entrapped in some way. And I'll be read, reading Red on Arrival by Nora Page. This is book number two in the Bookmobile Mystery Series. Um, R is a letter in the word canary. And this is actually an arc. Uh, this one I am reading for Nat Galley. I have a lot of Nat Galley books to get through in April. So I was able to put a couple of them into my monthly challenge, which was great. The next up, the Featured Author Challenge. This year they're doing something new and they're picking two featured authors. The Queen of Romance and the Princess of Romance. So the Queen of Romance this month is J.R. Ward, and the Princess of Romance is Sabrina York. And it says, um, so essentially you need to read a book by either of those authors, or read a book that the author's first or last name match one of those people. Or read a book with a number in the title or on the cover, or a book where someone works in the justice system or in the medical field, or a book with a pet, or read a book, uh, or read a book with a snarky character, or a book by an author with a pen name. So I actually went, I, I thought about it guys, I thought about starting the Black Brother, uh, the Black, is that what it's called? The Black Brotherhood, something like that by J.R. Ward. I know everybody and his brother is reading it, but it's got like 45 books in the series. No, I don't think it's that many. I think it's close to 20. And I just, I have so many series that I've already started and I'm starting that to get into another one that I'm not 100% interested in because I'm not into the whole paranormal romance -y, vampire type things. So I decided not to go with that. The Black Dagger Brotherhood, that's what it's called. I know some of you were quickly typing it into the comments below as I was talking about it. <laughs> I see you over there. Um, <laughs> um, so I decided to actually look through my, um, my books that I was currently reading, like the series I'm working my way through. And I know I'm reading a series by um, Sabrina Jeffries. And so the book I'm going to be reading is The Pleasure of Passion, of course, by Sabrina Jeffries, book number four in the Sinful Suitor series. So this does fit the challenge, Sabrina and Sabrina. So that's what I went with. Um, category number four, National Cat Kite Month. April was chosen as National Kite Month because it is the month that perfectly symbolizes hope, potential, and joy. As the first full month of spring, it is the month that we see the last of the snow giving way to green lawns. 
not here. Um, a month, they're calling for snow this weekend. Um, a month that we are eager to get outside and be active. So why not do it with a kite this year? Read a book with the letters kite, K-I-T-E in the title, or a book with the author's initials in kite, or a book set in the springtime. I'm pretty sure this one's set in the springtime. I'm not 100% certain, but based on that cover, I think it is. And it's A House Full of Fortunes by Judy Durante. Book number four in the Fortunes of Texas, Welcome to Horseback Hollow series. So this one should be really cute. Looks very spring-like on the cover. Looks like it'll be fun. Number five. April 4th is School Librarian Day. School Librarian Day honors those who serve our young students so well in the local school libraries. Take a minute today to appreciate all the hard work that the school librarian does daily and the patience the librarian displays as he and she aid our youth. Uh, read a book you got from a library or borrowed elsewhere, or a book that has a librarian character, or a book that has children in the story, or is about books, or a book that has books on the cover. So I'll be reading Only Mine by Susan Mallory. Um, this is book four in the Fool's Gold series, and this one I am borrowing from my local library uh, to read. So that's exciting. Uh, number six, April the 6th is New Beers Eve, B-E-E-R-S, -E -E as in the drink. The 21st Amendment uh, repealed the 18th Amendment and took effect at 12.01 a.m. on April 7th, 1933. On the evening of April 6th, anxious Americans lined up at breweries and distilleries to purchase legal beer and alcohol at the stroke of midnight. That night, some coined the term New Beers Eve, and a new annual holiday was born. Read a book with a 2 or a 1 in the page count, or a book with a 4, 7, or 3 in the publication date or a book where someone drinks beer or visits a bar or a pub. I'll be reading Shelter Mountain by Robin Carr, book number two in the Virgin River series. Pretty sure in this one, i pretty sure there's a pub in this book, so good possibility that that happens. But I believe this fit for the four, seven, or three in the publication date because it came out in 2007. Um, next up, April the 6th is Zoo Lover's Day. Zoos have been around for thousands of years. A zoo was originally called a menagerie, in some form, menageries have been around since ancient times. The earliest recorded was around 1500 BC. Read a book with an animal on the cover or a book that has animals as part of the story, Shifters Count, or a book with a Z anywhere on the cover. I'll be reading Tyler by Linda Lael Miller. Um, animals part of the story, our main character is a rodeo rider. So you know there's gonna at least be horses in the story. And this is book three in the Montana Creeds series. So this one will be really good. April the 8th. Or no, this is category eight, uh, April the 12th. Grilled cheese sandwich day. Do you not love that? <laughs> I so wanna mark that on my calendar. So on the 12th of April, we have grilled cheese for dinner. Um, people have been consuming, them, uh, consuming the ever popular grilled cheese sandwich for seemingly ever. It roots, its roots go back to the ancient Roman times when bread was topped with cheese and melted. It wasn't until the 1920s that sliced bread was created. Shortly after that, today's grilled cheese sandwich began to be enjoyed by millions. Read a book with food on the cover, or a book where someone eats uh, a sandwich or cheese, or a book with a mostly yellow cover, or a book that makes you feel warm and toasty. So this one doesn't have a mostly yellow cover, but there's a lot of yellow on this cover. And it is Where There's a Will by Beth Corby. This is another uh, net galley book. Um, and as you can see, there's blue and yellow, but the yellow is quite stands out quite a bit on this one and it looks like it's going to be really good and category number nine april 24th is first is arbor day national arbor day is the tree planters holiday and has been celebrated since 1872. it began in nebraska a largely treeless plain back in the 1800s it is a day to plant and, ded and dedicate a tree to help nature and the environment millions of trees are planted on this day i think i now want to go to plant a tree on that day maybe i'll start my garden that might be kind of pretty. I'll put some plants out there. Um, read a book with trees on the cover or a book where someone likes to be outside or a book set in the 1800s. So I'll be reading a holiday book of all things. Darn Good Cowboy Christmas by Carolyn Brown. Um, this is book three in the Spikes and Spurs series. Um, the, the main character looks like he's a cowboy, so cowboys like to work outside, so it works. Um, <laughs> I make do with some of these categories, you guys, just to fit my books in that I need to. And category number 10, of course, is Reader's Choice. Read any book of your choosing. I'll be reading Her Texas X by Kathleen Gabrera. This is another uh, NetGalley ARC book that I will be reading, and it looks like a great contemporary romance. So 
the next category that I actually don't have anything for you guys, but I will tell you about it next week when I do my weekly reads, is the Pick It For Me Challenge. This is also part of the Romance Readers Reading Group on Goodreads. I will leave a link to this in the description box below. Um, I believe it's already be, it will already be closed for the month of March or April, but feel free to keep your eye on it for the month of May. So essentially what this challenge is, is that you get paired up with somebody else. Now it's not like I get paired up with somebody and they get paired up with me. And what you need to do is there's different categories and you need to pick books for that person. So you pick books off their want to read shelf, like stuff they already have on their TBR. And then you also pick a new to them book that you personally would recommend to them. So essentially you are getting like anywhere from four to eight recommendations. Um, and so my plan will be to read one book that came from my TBR and one book that my pick E picked for me um, that is not on my TBR. So again, I will mention this, these books in my next weekly reads video. Um, the next one is the Audible Romance Package Category Challenge. This one makes me very happy. So this is something that I started doing this year. And I do have a membership in the Audible Romance Package on Audible. It is an extra fee on top of your monthly membership or you can just get this instead of getting a monthly credit if you just wanted the Audible Romance Package. Um, so I picked 24 categories from the category section on the Audible Romance Package page and I put them all in this jar. And every month I have been pulling two of them out and I do this live on camera so I do not have these books written down yet. And then what I'm gonna do is jump over to my laptop and I'm going to pick two books and then I will come back and share with you what they are. So let's go ahead into my lovely David's Tea container right here and let's pick our two categories. So the first category is going to be, make sure I get one. So there's one. I'll just pull them both out at the same time. That's only one, right? Yeah, that is only one. Okay. It looked like it might've been two and number two. So I just wanted to double check. Okay. I'm going to put this back and I shall put that back. And the first category that we have is, sorry, new adult. I had a whole rant of new adult a few weeks ago. <laughs> that I don't understand what it is. <laughs> I just, can we just call it adult? Like, anyway, I'm not going to get into it again. But it's new adult, so I will pick a new adult book to read for that one. And then we also got, ooh, celebrity. Oh, that's exciting. So that'll be fun. So those are our two picks for this month. So I will be right back to share with you what I got. Okay, so we've picked our books. And this first book is precisely what drives me bonkers about new adult and the term new adult. So I took a look and there are almost 70 pages of new adult books listed as part of the Audible Romance Package. So I started kind of going through them and looking to see what I saw. And this book kind of jumped out at me and it looked really cute. And I think it's because as of filming this, I haven't read it yet, but it's I'm gonna read it within the next few days. Um, Pride and Prejudice. But this book is called Prejudice Meets Pride by Rachel Anderson. This is book number one in the Meet Your Match series. Um, and this looked really, really adorable. So I thought, okay, it looks like fun. And I kind of read the back of it. It looks, it's about a woman who, you know, picks up her whole life and moves to Colorado to look after her nieces for some reason and ends up meeting a guy. I don't think it's any sort of a Pride and Prejudice retelling, but I think that's why it jumped out at me because I do plan on reading Pride and Prejudice in the next few days. But anyway, I went on Goodreads to go and have a quick look at it. And in the section where they put people can post questions, this is my my issue with New Adult, one of my issues with New Adult, is that somebody posted saying, I've heard that this is a clean story, but yet all these people have labeled it as a New Adult novel. Can someone confirm? And the answer to it was, yes, it's a clean story. So there is no adult content in this. Um, it is a... Um, it is a, you know, also no swearing or anything like that. And I thought I was always, not always, but part of what I consider to be new adult is the fact that it is YA with adult content. But, you know, like younger, younger characters, characters in their late teens to early 20s. My issue with new adult outside of everything else is that it's not well defined. You know, it's not like YA. We know YA is not a genre. YA is a, YA is a, um, an age range for people. Like adult novels are, are older characters meant for adults. Middle grade novels are meant for middle, middle graders. Toddler books are meant for toddlers. Does that make sense? New adult 
it's so gray between like from here to here like I'm not looking for a cut and dry this is where it ends and this is where it begins I do know that there is going to be some overlap but did we really need to define an entire another thing for that overlap between YA and adult I'm sorry I'm ranting I'm gonna stop now but new adult is not my favorite thing anytime I see it come up I just kind of roll my eyes because I have no idea how to define it and when you're being asked to read a new adult book for a challenge unless you have something like the audible romance package where there are you know a list of these are new adult titles or you go on goodreads and you look up that new adult whatever if not you have to go through each book individually to see if it's labeled new adult that's that's part of my issue with it then that's that's all i'm gonna say so i am very much looking forward to this book because it does look adorable and it is clean so in case like i say for this challenge i i do have um uh if you guys want to follow me with it um in my goodreads group i will leave it linked in the description box below um i will leave links to both of these um uh challenge or both of these categories to the audible pages of them um, and as I always say, you don't have to read the same books that I do, but even if you just want to read from the same category, I think that would be a lot of fun. So the second category that we got was celebrity. I don't know how this fits into celebrity, but it was there. And it is Colton's Deep Cover by L. Kennedy. I think it's the L. Kennedy that a lot of people talk about um, as being, you know, a very favorite author of theirs. And this is a Harlequin novel, you guys. Um, and I didn't know, I took a quick look at L. Kennedy's profile. I didn't realize she's from the suburbs of Toronto. So howdy neighbor. <laughs> so that's kind of awesome. So this one looks interesting. It also looks like it might take place in Amish country. If you look at that cover in the bottom, there's a horse and buggy. So I don't know. Um, it, I don't know yet at the time of filming this, whether Elizabeth and I are going to be doing Amish in April. I will of course leave an announcement to that if we do decide to do it. And of course my TBR will grow just a bit if we do, but for now, this might factor into the whole Amish thing. So that's kind of exciting. Um, so yeah, so that was the Audible Romance Package Challenge. Um, the second to last challenge here is, of course, the, and I have my sheet over there, sorry, is the Romance Opoly. Excuse me, I'm just going to reach over and grab it. So as I said, the second to last challenge here on my list is Romance Opoly. And this is my game board. It's, you, you can't really tell, but some of it's a little bit marked up. I've been kind of checking up off things as I do them. Um, and so this is my game board and I keep it in the back of my, my day planner. Um, and this is a challenge that is put on by um, Jessica over at Peace Love Books and the girls at the Under the Cover Book blog. And this is exactly like a Monopoly game. So I have virtual dice that I roll every month and I pick three new squares every month to do. And then in December, I'll only have to do two, the last two. So you go around the board and you um, do different challenges. So this has been a lot of fun. And it's kind of gotten me a little bit out of my comfort zone with some of the things to be reading. And, and that's always enjoyable. Um, so yeah, so I will leave a link, of course, to that in the description box below. So you guys can go and check out that website and find out more about it. You can start this at any time, of course. So the first one that I got was Military Muse. The first square I got was Military Muse. And the book I'll be reading is The Unsung Hero by Suzanne Brockelman. Um, this is book number one in the Troubleshooter series. This is an author I've been familiar with and I've read some of her work many years ago, but it's been quite some time. So of course this is a book that features somebody in the military. I'm waiting for this one to come in from the library for me and I cannot wait. It looks really good. I mean, hello on that cover. Um, so yeah, she is a really great author and I'm very, very much looking forward to this one. Sorry for knocking the camera, you guys. The next one that I got was Heartbreak Hospital and I took a little bit of a, um, a play on words with this one. You had to read a book that featured a doctor or somebody in the medical profession. Well, I guess this would absolutely work. The book that I am reading is The Fox and the Hound by R.S. Gray. This features a veterinarian. He's in the medical field. A vet is an animal doctor. <laughs> it absolutely works. So I've heard a bit about this book over the last like year or two on booktube from a few different people and I'm very very excited to try it out it looks adorable and I cannot wait to get to it and the last one I got was Leather Lane and when I got that I kind of went ooh I'm not too sure about this one like this I, I have no issue with adult content in books you guys know that but sometimes some of the more Fifty Shades of Grey isn't exactly the place that I prefer to go a lot of the times um, and that was my first thought to tell you where my mind went. But this one was to actually read a, I believe it was an urban fantasy series that 
has already been completed. Like it's not an ongoing series. This is a complete series, but to start it, do you know what I mean? And I looked through, they, they do give you suggestions for different books on the, on the Romanceopoly website. So of course, as I said, I will leave that link below. And I was kind of looking through it and this book jumped out at me and I went, oh my gosh, this is a book that I had started years and years ago, but I never got, I got about halfway through it because you guys know paranormal vampires are not necessarily my thing, but this is a series that kind of always intrigued me. So I thought I would give it a shot and I was able to pick it up from my library and it is Dead Until Dark by Charlene Harris, book number one in the Sookie Stackhouse series. So I'm excited. I think this one looks like it will be fun. Um, you know, it's, 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 I, vampires don't necessarily bother me. I don't mind vampires. Twilight vampires I'm not into. The sparkly vampires, no thank you. Give me a real vampire. Give me an Anne Rice vampire any day of the week over a sparkly shiny vampire. Um, <laughs> but... Um, so I'm team Anne Rice, not team Edward or team whatever. Um, so yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. And then the last bunch of books here, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books really quick I have to talk about. Did I count that right? Seven books are the other books that I have to read for NetGalley for this month. These are all coming out in late April and May. So I will be ahead of the game by the time I finished all these at the end of April. I will be one month ahead with all of my NetGalley books, which makes me very happy. So the first one is The Summer Cottage by Viola Shipman. This one looks like a great women's fiction novel. I really love the cover on this one. Wonderland by Jennifer Cody Epstein. This one I believe is a historical fiction novel and it really intrigued me when I saw it on NetGalley and it looks really good. And that the woman, the blonde haired woman on the cover, Naomi Watts, right? It, it reminds me so much of Naomi Watts. Um, every time I look at the cover, that's what I think. Um, Getting Hot with the Scot by Melanie Johnson. Um, this one and Smitten by the Brit, which is another one I have to read this month. One comes out in April, one comes out in May. Um, both of them I was contacted by the publisher and asked if I'd be interested in reading them. So I of course said yes. I believe this is a series that kind of is like a, a companion series that um, follows different uh, people falling in love in different places of the world, which just sounds adorable to me. Um, a Summer to Remember by Sue Moorcroft. This one looks really, really cute. I had not actually seen the cover when I requested this one on NetGalley, and I was approved for it, but I just thought it looked really cute. Like, it sounded really cute, and then when I saw the cover, I kind of fell in love with it just a little bit more. Um, the Book Women of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. This is something that, I believe this is a historical fiction novel, and it just really looked interesting and sounded really interesting. And I just thought it would be nice for something a little bit different with, you know, all of the romance. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to it. And the last one is There's Something About Sweetie by uh, San Sandea Menon. I am so excited about this one. This one, I cannot believe I was approved for. I'm so thrilled. This is the author of When Dimple Met Rishi and From Twinkle With Love, both of which I read last year and both of which I absolutely loved. So I'm so looking forward to this one. And this one kind of holds a special place in my heart in a way too, because my mom's nickname is Sweetie. <laughs> both my mom's, my mom's name is Sandy. My dad's sister's name is Sandy. And both of them share the same last name because my aunt got divorced and took back her maiden name. So they both have the same name. And my cousin, um, uh, you know, my dad's brother's son, um, had two Aunt Sandys growing up. And my grandfather, he would be at then he'd say Sandy and both my mom and my aunt would turn and look. So my grandfather took to calling my mom Sweetie and everybody calls her that now. And I just think it's absolutely adorable. So when I saw the title of this book, of course, you know, again, a special place in my heart because it's my mom. <laughs> That's not my mom, but uh, you know, it just, it reminds me of, um, of her name. And it was funny. I was telling her that too. And I said, this book I'm going to be reading has your nickname on it. So we kind of had a little laugh about that. So that was kind of cute. But anyway, longer video as per usual these ones usually are so like I said in my next weekly reads which will be this coming Saturday I will give I will announce to you guys the two books that I picked for the pick for me challenge and of course if Elizabeth and I do decide to do Amish in April I will of course announce that um, later on in the month anyway guys that is it for me today please do let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about about them are you participating in any of these challenges and what books are you picking for them? And until my next video, guys, take care and happy reading. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, everybody.